Should I use Figma or Fig Jam? How many times have you found yourself asking this question to yourself or to your design peers? Figma and FigJam are in the same drawing tool owned by Figma, but they serve very different purposes. And in this video, I wanna talk about when you should use Figma versus when you should use FigJam. What is the difference? At what points in the design process should you be using which tool? This can be a lot as a product designer to figure out which tool to use and when. So let's get into it. First, let's start by defining the difference between Figma and Fig Jam. Figma is a vector drawing tool where you can use the pen tool to create your own custom vector shapes. This means you have full control over creating your own design and can manipulate points on a pixel grid to meet your needs and requirements. Because everything in Figma is vector and you're drawing on a pixel scale, this means you can increase and decrease the size of your designs and it will maintain scale and quality. You can create really high definition visuals and Figma supports exporting in SVG, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. So similar to scaling it up and down in Figma, you can also scale it up and down in the web as well, which means it's a really great format to export if you're exporting for web purposes. Figma also has built in prototyping features so you can create end-to-end -end prototyping flows. On the other hand, we have FigJam, which is more of a whiteboarding tool, similar to tools like Miro or Mural. FigJam does not support vector, so you can't draw your own custom shapes or use the pen tool. There is a limited amount of shapes that you can create in FigJam. So while you are limited to a set of shapes and text functionality in FigJam, they also do support things like stickers, emoji reactions, and there's also a few plugins and widgets as well that you can use. FigJam has a range of of templates to help you get started, but you can also copy and paste your designs over from Figma into FigJam, but they will be pasted as a flattened image. So you won't be able to see the sort of individual layers or vectors that make up that design. Now, both of these tools have commenting and collaboration features because it's all kind of built in the browser. So everything is live and in real time. So when should you use which tool? Cause they're kind of similar, but I think their key differences make them have very different purposes and each can shine at different parts of the design process. So in order to determine which tool to use when and for what, let's take a look at the double diamond design process. I recently did a video diving all into the double diamond. So let's just look at it from a high level here. There's two diamonds and the first diamond is really about discovery work and exploration and the second diamond is more focused on refinement, polish and handoff. So Fig Jam being more of a low fidelity whiteboarding tool is most valuable in the first diamond when we're doing a lot of that exploratory discovery work and we intentionally want to keep things kind of low fidelity and that's where Fig Jam can actually have a benefit to its limited feature set because it's kind of force functioning you to stay in that low fidelity level and really focus on ideas and exploration of ideas rather than getting into that high fidelity work, which is more for the second diamond. So during this phase of the diamond, one activity you might be doing is workshops or sprints. And this is where Fig Jam can be really useful. You can use Fig Jam to kick off a project. I also find Fig Jam can be helpful for outlining sort of timelines, getting everybody on the same page, running design sprints where we're keeping everything super low fidelity and more focused on the ideation rather than the execution. And it's also really great for gathering and voting on ideas. So Fig Jam has these built in post-it notes. It's really easy to just create a note, type your idea into it, and then you can end up with all of these ideas from the group. And there is a sticker for plus one, which is often what we use on my team for voting. So you can then kind of cluster ideas and vote really quickly and easily using the built-in Fig Jam stickers. And we all know from running workshops that we often run exercises with a time limit. So we often have timers for each of the different exercises during our workshops. And Fig Jam has a built-in timer right up here in the top right where you can start a timer for as long as you want and everybody who is in that fig jam file can see the timer knows how much time is left so that's really great for doing these kind of workshopping exercises as well i've also used fig jam for mood boards so i was recently doing a sort of uh, swag sprint with a few of my colleagues at work and as part of that exercise we all created our own mood boards and so fig jam makes it really easy to bring in images from the web which is super great and so we all ended up with these mood boards which was really easy and low lift to do in Fig Jam. 
Another thing you might be doing in this phase of the diamond is research. And I do find Fig Jam can be really great for synthesizing research. So maybe you wanna bring in quotes that you got from users during user testing or insights that you learned, cluster those into themes. Again, the post-it notes are really, really useful here. Maybe you wanna put things on like a matrix or some sort of grid or like organizing information in some way. Big Jam is great with its sort of like infinite canvas. You don't have to create artboards or anything to put things on. There is no like additional pages. So everything is kind of there in this one infinite canvas. And for things like synthesizing research in a collaborative way, I think Fig Jam really excels here because it has those built-in post-it notes and it's super easy to cluster things. Another thing you might be doing as a designer is creating functional flows. So what I mean by this is not necessarily creating these high fidelity final screens as flows, but maybe you're just trying to sort out like how this feature is actually gonna work and what is the different logic and the, the different functionality that this experience needs to support. Fig Jam is just much easier to get started because it has all the built-in shapes, the built-in flows and arrows that you need to create your final flow. So I highly recommend Fig Jam for this kind of exercise. Doing it in Fig Jam at this level of fidelity also helps you be more focused on the functional part of your flow rather than getting kind of caught up in the wireframes and visuals that we might start to get into when we get into Figma. Keeping it at this level of fidelity is also really helpful when you do have that logic in your flows like decision trees or yes no's. I know from experience doing this in Figma my flows can like totally blow up and my arrows get all disconnected and it's really hard to organize that information so that's why Fig Jam I think is better for this exercise. As we move into the second diamond and this is where Figma really starts to excel. Often during this part of the diamond, we are getting more into that high fidelity stage of our work and we're starting to refine our designs, maybe even create a few prototypes at this stage. So this is where Figma really excels. As you're designing screens, you're gonna wanna have access to those robust drawing and vector drawing capabilities so you can create your own custom shapes and really manipulate the design to look exactly how you want it. So anytime you need to create screens of some sort, whether it's low fidelity wireframes or high fidelity final mocks, this is when you're gonna want to use Figma. Figma gives you all the drawing tools, functionalities, capabilities that you need to actually create these designs, whereas Fig Jam just doesn't support it. Figma also supports design libraries, so you can turn on the design library for your team or company and easily pull in assets, components, variants that you need to put in your designs to fit within the design system. If you have a few designs that you want to bring to a user testing session and get some feedback on from potential customers or users, this is where Figma is really great because you can actually turn those designs into interactive prototypes. Figma has a lot of robust built-in prototyping features and capabilities like setting your interactions, transitions, defining scrollable views on your page, and also fixing content to the page as it scrolls. Figma lets you create multiple prototypes in one page or in one file. So that way you could have a few different flows that you maybe wanted to test in a user testing session and it's all there for you in the same place. Figma lets you quickly create a share link that you can then share with potential users that you're gonna be wanting to doing the user testing with so they can open it up in their browser and actually click through and interact with your prototypes, which is pretty cool. Often during this stage of the diamond, I find myself creating a few presentations here and there. As a designer, we often have to present our work with whether it's for feedback, to get stakeholder buy-in, just to give updates on how a project is going. And I find Figma the better tool to use when it comes to creating presentations and sharing out your work in progress. Figma does have pre-made different frame sizes and one of the options they have is 16 by nine, which is basically the same as a sort of Google slide or keynote presentation slide. So you can easily create that frame and then create your slides as you wish. So maybe you wanna put in some updates about the project, share out some research findings, maybe throw in a few concepts that you want some feedback on, whatever it is your presentation is about, you can easily create this in Figma and then present it using the play button in the top right. So after the double diamond is wrapped up and complete and your project is handed off, maybe it's been built, one common exercise for teams to do at this stage is a retro, which basically is a retrospective looking back at how the project went. I often run these in Fig Jam and the reason I do that is not only because I 
I think Fig Jam is a better tool for this, but it's also a little bit more inclusive of all of the people participating in the retrospective. So usually it's not just the designers engaging in this exercise, but it's everyone else who is also working on this project in the team. So that means you're going to have non-designers coming in to participate in the retro and Fig Jam is just a little bit easier to use for people who don't necessarily have robust drawing design tool experience. So Fig Jam has a built-in retrospective template, which you can use. I've also created my own in the past, but it essentially gets folks to reflect on what went well, what didn't go well, what are some ideas we have for how we could do things differently. And I also like that the Fig Jam template has this nice little shout out area also. So usually I'll set the timer for some silent post-it note time, and then we'll cluster ideas, vote, have a discussion, and just generally talk about how the project went. Fig Jam can also be used for things that are completely outside of the design process and not related to design. Maybe you want to do a fun cultural team exercise or an icebreaker. And I think Fig Jam is a really great tool for that because it's low lift and super accessible by everyone. For example, when I started my new job last year, one of my sort of onboarding exercises was to create this Meet Me Fig Jam where I answered a couple of questions about how I like to work and why I joined the company, along with adding some personal photos and things about me outside of work and this is a ritual we have for every new team member who joins the team. We've also used Fig Jam as an icebreaker during big team meetings. Uh, recently one of the managers created this like funky faces exercise where we all had to contribute to drawing a feature in one box before moving to the next box and then you ended up with the, all of these really cool funky faces. Again totally not part of the design process but just a really fun team social exercise. So I think Fig Jam has a lot of fun potential for things like this too. Okay so hopefully now you have a little bit more clarity on the functionality and the capability of these two tools. I use both at different moments in the design process and also I just want to note that like this is just my opinion and you could totally use Figma to do some of the things that I mentioned I do in Fig Jam. I think it would be a little bit more difficult to try to do some of the Figma work in Fig Jam because it doesn't support that high fidelity feature set that we often need to create those polished designs but they're both great tools. I have a lot of fun using both of them and let me know if there is something you use Figma or Fig Jam for that I didn't capture in this video. I'd love to hear how you're using it on this team. And I'm sure others watching this video would like to see as well so that they have some inspiration to bring back to their team. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye.